yesterday we finished with vertex transitive and edge transitive graphs. So today we will continue with Cayley graphs, which actually belongs to the main part of my uh, course, and also results will be presented with me for Cayley graphs. So Kelly graphs. A Kelly graph is actually our Kelly graphs are sometimes of vertex transitive graph. And Kelly graphs come from groups. The definition for somebody who didn't work much in group theory might be a bit complicated, but it actually is something very simple. So I will illustrate it on uh, some um, easy examples. So let's first look at the definition of a Cayley graph. A Cayley graph is specified by a group and a generating set. So specified by a group and set of generators. So let's just have some very easy example. Let's just take a cyclic group, Z, let's say phi. So it's a cyclic group, additive cyclic group with five elements and the elements are Zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. So shall just taking integers modulo five. So remainder five. So let's say we would have two plus four. What is two plus four? One. Yes. So it would be actually six, but six or six modulo uh, five will be one. Well, whatever I don't know. Four plus four. Eight. Three, yes, because it would be eight, but modulo five will be three. Okay, so great. So we have a group. So vertices of a graph will be elements of a group. Fantastic. So this group has five elements. So the graph will have five vertices. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and again, elements of a group are vertices of a graph. So zero is element of the group, zero is vertex of a graph. One is element of the group, it's vertex of a graph. Two, three, four. Okay, now what about edges? Well, edges are not yet defined because first we must define generating set because clearly graph is defined for a group and for generating set. Okay, I pick the group, I pick my group gamma to be Z5. Gamma is it, but I didn't choose yet the generating set. So let me just pick the easiest generating set. Let's say the element one. So if I pick element one to be my element in my generating set, then I will have for a generator, I will have an edge v or vertex V connected to vertex U times A. V U A. Well, it's written U A, but actually it's U, and here is the group operation. Okay, so let me just use some symbol, let's say plus in the circle. So in general, when we actually write it down, we just write U A, but we mean U, and here is U times A because we let's say assume it's a multiplicative. But in case we are having additive group, then it will be in our case u plus a. So again, if it's multiplicative group, it will be u times a. If it's additive, it will be u plus a. If we don't know what is the operation, we can just write u and group operation a. Okay, so good. So specified by a group. Vertices are the elements of the group, and there is an edge between two vertices U and V, if and only, so now this is important, there is an edge UV, if and only, there is a generator A such that V is equals to U A. Well, in this case, if we pick generator one in our generating, so it will be, V must be equal U plus one, which means, Actually, if the generator is one means zero will be connected to one. 
one will be connected to two, two will be connected to three, because always you will just connect element three because it equal uh, with two because three is equal to two plus one. You will connect four with three because four is equal to three plus one. So is if the generator is one, you are just jumping by one. If the generator would be two, then zero would be connected to two. Two would be connected to four. Four would be connected to six. But what is six? Six is one. So you would actually get star. Okay. Now, one more important thing. So let me just complete it. Is what about if my generating set would be having four as a generator? Should I start with writing the edges? You will actually get the same graph, right? So now to define it properly, the generating set must be containing also inverse elements. Okay, so it's it's better instead of writing one to use the generating set always in such way which contains also inverses because. Actually, if you are studying directed graphs, which we'll be mentioning tomorrow or probably only on a Friday, then if the generator is one, let's say for directed graph, means it will be connected because you are going by one. So if we will be studying direct, directed graphs from generating set one, you would obtain this graph, okay? Because you would be jumping by one. If you would be studying directed graphs and you would have generated four, then zero, one, two, three, four, then you would be connecting zero, the edge from zero to, to four, right? Because you are always making plus four, from zero to four, plus four, four, plus four will be eight, three, right? Three plus four, seven is two, right? Two plus four, four is the generator, one, right? And one plus four is five. So for this generating set and this group, if we would be studying directed telegraph, we would obtain this. If we have generator four and group Z5, and we study directed telegraph. We would obtain this. However, if we study undirected graphs, after we create our directed graph, we just omit direction, we summarize direction. So since we are at the moment focusing on directed graphs, we don't care about these directions, we obtain this. Okay? Similarly, this one. If we don't care about directions, we obtain this graph. So it kind of means it doesn't matter if we choose one or four, we are going to obtain the same undirected Cayley graph. So to write it properly, we should write that our generating set for our undirected Cayley graph is one and four. But actually we care only about one of those elements because both of them are actually will bring us the same graph. But we just, take the generating set, which contains also inverses. Okay, so this was one easy example. Let me just give you one more, just that we are sure we know how to construct uh, Haley graphs. So can you construct, can you try by yourself for a few minutes? So let me take now a group, a group, still let me just take cyclic one, let's say Z, uh, the nine and the generating set will be containing the elements two, um, no, let me put five there, and their inverse. But those are not important at the moment when you construct the graph because just construct the Kelly graph for this group and these two generate. So group is Z9, means you have nine elements and 
you will be jumping by two and jumping by five. And also you can tell me what are actually the inverses. I don't want to write them down at the moment, not to confuse you because create age is only for the generator two and for the generator five. So Z9, we know it has nine elements. Zero, one, two, dot, 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 up to what? Yes. Yeah. So those will be our vertices of our graph. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, what means the generator two? You'll be collected zero in zero is two, two with four, right? Four with six, six with eight, and so on, jumping by two. Can you tell me what is the inverse element for two? Yes. Why the inverse element is seven? Because two plus seven gives you identity, which is zero. Okay? So remember, element plus the inverse element gives you zero. So we pick any element. And inverse for the element is just minus. Okay, great. So for two, the inverse is actually seven, which means if you would be using seven to create all your edges, you would get exactly the same. Okay, so if you are using two or if you are using seven, you are going to get the same. Uh, structure. Okay, this is not the final product because we used only generator two to create the edges. Now the generator part will connect zero to one. Well, five means we are adding five. So zero going to five. Five, we are adding five. So five plus five is 10. It's one, 10 is one, right? Because modulo nine. And one plus five, six. And six plus five is 11. 11 modulo nine, two, and so on. So now we can see how it will be going, right? Maybe if you don't want to have mess as I have, you could have started the connecting two by going outside. It would look probably a bit nicer. So anyway, what is the inverse for five? Four, four right? Because five plus inverse must be equal to zero, right? Element plus its inverse must be equal to identity element. So it must be four because four is actually minus five, right? Great. So this is the group. And this is the generating set, and this is the result. Now, let me mention another set of Kelly graphs, which are called K cubes. Well, everybody probably knows cube. So cubes which have this shape can be generalized. So let's just look at the, let's say, cube, because it mentioned the K cube. Is a Kelly graph for the group Z2 to the power K. So, what is the meaning of Z2 to the power K? So, Z2 we would know, right? Z2 is a cyclic group. Since Z9 contains elements 0 up to 8, Z2 contains elements 0, 1, 
and z two to the k to the power k is just taking z two times times z two times dot 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 times z two k times. Okay, so let's just have again special cases of. Uh, this view group here, Q. Okay, so what about Q2? Q2? Q2 is graph which is coming from Z2 and Z2, which means uh, elements of this group, maybe. Think about it, what will be the element of this group, or how many elements will this uh, group have? Four, right? So the elements are combinations. First coordinate can be zero or one, and second coordinate can be zero, right? So combine all possibilities of zero, one in the first place, and zero, one in the second place. So it will be zero, 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 one. Uh, one zero and the last one 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 which one do you think is the identity of it? zero 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 is the identity because this will be inverse to this one this plus this one will give you one one what is inverse to this element one one plus what gives you zero zero itself. itself right so this element is inverse to itself okay so this element is inverse to this one this element is inverse to itself okay so inverse for one one is actually the same element okay let's just define a generating set to create a graph it's not mentioned, but it's obvious that we are using the generating set, which is zero, one is the first generator, and the second generator is one, zero. Um, uh, maybe I said one nonsense. The, the, the inverse element for zero, one? Yes. yes, it's zero, one, not one, zero. So actually, all the elements are inverses for to to themselves. Okay, great. So because now when we are thinking about these elements again, we check. Okay, is this uh, set containing also their inverses? But yes, this set does contain the inverses because zero one is inverse to itself and one zero is inverse to itself. Great. So uh, the generating set is well defined. We can close the bracket and we can just uh, draw this graph so now elements of the group will give us vertices of a graph right so here we have zero zero here we have zero one it's better to write one zero here and one one the third is from zero zero and uh it means if the generator is zero one element i j will be connected to element i j plus one okay so let's see if previously our generator was five it means we had h from i to i plus five, okay? Generator five, h i is connected to element i is connected to element i plus five. Now, if the generator is zero one, you are connecting i j to i j plus one. If the generator is one zero, you are connecting i j to, yes, i plus one, zero, yeah. No, you are keeping it. Zero means you are keeping the element which you have. Okay? If the generator is zero, 
you are keeping j. If the generator is one, the first coordinate of the generator is one, you are adding to i, i plus one. Okay? So it's adding to, not uh, the putting there zero. So actually, you are going to get this. Okay? And here, write down the vertices which are representing. If you start from zero, zero, can you tell me what will be this vertex? Which will it have some zeros? Actually, no, because here you will have one element which is one because it's connected, right? This one, this vertex is connected to this vertex. So, in case you would have the group gamma being now, okay, let's apply it for k equals to three. So, Q3, which is the standard cube, Q3 would be a group Z2 times Z2 times. Z2 and generating set will be now. Uh, let me just write it simply just like this. And zero to the one. Okay, which means element i j k is connected to i plus one j k. Element i j k is connected to i j plus one k. Element i, j, k from the third one is connected to i, j, k plus, okay? Well, now we are working only with a group which has zero, one there. But let's say if we would have a group z20 times z20 times z20, okay? So it would be some bigger numbers. And let's say the generator would be element let's say three five seven this is one element because now we are in this group so let's say three five seven would be the generator then you would be connecting i j k to i plus three or let me not go so nicely consecutively let me just put here eight eight seven five so it would be i plus eight so here j plus five and here k plus seven right so every element i j k would be connected to i plus uh, eight j plus five and k plus seven so let's say which vertex would be connected to the vertex let me pick any vertex from here let's say to zero 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 would be connected to eight five seven right but now what would be connected to uh, 17, five and 19, right? 17, five, 19 would be connected to uh, 17, yes, correct. Ten. What, five, 10, and next one, uh, correct. So this vertex would be connected to this vertex, right? Obviously, again, we will have to be careful and we had to also, to have the generating set well-defined, we would have to add also inverses. And inverse, inverse element for eight, five, seven would be 12, 15, 30. Yes, you would get the same graph using this set or same graph using this set. Or even you can write it instead of A57, uh, instead of writing 12, 15, and uh, uh, 13, you can write minus eight, minus five, minus, okay? Good. So this graph, since IJK is connected to these three vertices, this one you must speak as only one coordinate having being one, okay? Because zero, zero, is, zero is connected to one, zero, zero, it is connecting to zero, one, zero, and it is connecting to zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Doesn't matter which out of three elements you put to which place, just you must have three edges. So three vertices adjacent to IJK will be having 
zero in the first place you can pick wherever you want to put it but it must be one of these three places zero in the second place again you can pick the other out of these three vertices and zero in the third place and then you continue that way and you will be forced to have one 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 in this place. so these one are this set of graphs k cubes are scaly graphs as we could easily see because scaly graphs can come from groups now the next one the pointer doesn't work so maybe whoever is there must just click on the screen and then it will work <laughs> or maybe battery just check Okay. No, it's working. From the first level, just two rows, big one. <laughs> okay, now the answer is already here, but the question would be. If the Peterson graph is a Kelly graph, and it might be not obvious, why yes or why no? Well, if some graph is or is not a Kelly graph, well, how to prove? Well, if you want to show it, well, you just must find the construction. And if if you want to prove it doesn't exist, then well, again, you must somehow show it, prove it that it doesn't exist. So in this case, the Peterson graph, if by chance you forgot, let me just write it down. This is the Peterson graph. And how many vertices does a Peterson graph have? Yes, so number of vertices is 10. And vertices come from the elements of the group. So if we would dream about constructing Peterson graph from a group, how many elements that must the group have? 10, right? So we would have to find some group having 10 elements. And not sure if you know how many different groups of order 10 exist. The 10? Okay, so we here we have two groups Z10 and Z2 cross Z5. My question is, is it the same group or not? Well, this group is generated by one element, right? Can you find one element that generates this group? Well, yes or no? Well, if we pick one one, and start adding it, the next one will be uh, 2, 2, which is 0, 2, plus 1, 1, will be 1, 3, plus 1, 1, will be 0, 4, the next one will be 1, 0. So I think after this number of steps, you can see that it will work, right? Uh, so next one, 0, 2, uh, zero one. Uh, well, yeah, sorry, sorry. We are here. My mistake is here. Uh, uh, yeah, it was correct. Sorry, sorry. Zero one. Yes, next one. One, one two, and next one. Zero three. Next one. One four, and zero zero. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So as you can see, this one really generates the group. So this group is the same as this one. Okay. And as you can see, this graph definitely can't be obtained from a group which is generated by one element. So Peterson graph is actually not a Cayley graph. 
And now the degree diameter problem, which I introduced yesterday, which is we are looking for the largest possible graphs or the graph with the largest possible number of vertices for two parameters, degree and diameter. But now we are going to focus only on daily graphs. So we want to construct largest scale graphs for given D and K. And why are Kelly graphs special? Why do we care about them more than about some other graphs? Actually, the Kelly graphs are, as it will be shown in the next part, very symmetric. So every element, let's say if you are checking the diameter of the graph, you just need to check distances from one vertex because for every vertex, same properties hold. So if you want to know what is the diameter, check the distances from one vertex to all the others. And once you, want, once you take, check the distances from one to all the others, the same property will work for all the other vertices. So in terms of diameter checking, it's very easy to check the diameter of a Kelly graph. And also if you want to set up a network, if you want to have some, uh, some network, it's much better for it to be symmetric because it's easier to set it up. So therefore it's better than having some mess of million vertices or million nodes in a network it's better to have something very nicely symmetric because you can see the properties of the graph uh, and it's from the group. You can study the properties of the graph and it's easier to actually to see the representation of your network. And here there is just one theorem which is giving bound for graphs of diameter three, okay? Because, so what's the meaning of C? D3, it means if you are showing CD3 is at least this number, it means we can construct a graph having this number of vertices. Therefore, we are saying CD3 is greater or equal to, because greater or equal to means we have construction having this number of vertices. The vertices are coming from a group. Well, if somebody wants to construct better, then somebody must find a graph having more than this number of vertices. Because let's say, if we construct, let's say, this number of vertices, well, if somebody wants to construct something better, he must construct the graph having more vertices. And then this one is not anymore the best possible. And then if somebody wants to construct better for the parameters, he must construct something with more vertices. So that's starting it from, <clears throat> from down, lower bounds. Lower bounds on CD3, on CD3, Construct something. If somebody wants to overtake you, he can try to construct something better. Okay, this construction is actually my construction for diameter three and general degree. And this construction is coming from a, from a group. So let's just start. Let me start showing you how it is defined. Maybe the difference is you can see here, I have it for D, being a multiple of four, and here for any d. But here I'm taking something out, minus three. But here, it is actually d to the power three. So actually the difference is just d minus three, and here it's d, which means for d being multiple of four, I can construct something something slightly better. So it means if I want to generalize the construction, I was actually adding edges because I wanted to have the result for every degree, not only for degree, which is, which is a multiple of four. <coughs> I wanted to have construction also for degree being 99, degree being 98, degree being 97. I don't want to jump by four. So I was adding generators to my generator set, which are useless, which are not necessary just to have Result for every d because I'm not losing that much. Look here, because if I'm going with d to uh, infinity, I don't care if it's uh, d or d minus three. It's actually not that big loss. So therefore, to generalize the construction is of d to the power three. I have d minus three to the power three because I was adding generators to my uh, graph, which are the edges, which are unnecessary just to have general construction. Okay, we are starting with any group of order n. 
We don't need any additional properties for that uh, group. But now, since it's general group, I'm not using identity element zero because identity element zero is used mostly for additive groups, multiplicative groups, mostly they are using uh, identity uh, uh, zero uh, for, uh, for multiplicative one. So actually, I'm just using E, right? I'm just being uh, general. Yes, let's just use E because we are not saying if a group H is additive or multiplicative. Now, let's take, let's take group H to the power three, which means direct product of three groups H. You can actually even, it will work even if you just are considering cyclic group. So in case it's easier for you, just imagine that that group H is just a cyclic group of order M. So let's say being Z M. Okay, so H is a group of order M. You can just imagine it's a cyclic group Z M. And now, obviously, when I want to construct something, something quite large, I am not going to succeed if I'm using some easy groups. So the group operation is mentioned here, which looks again a bit uh, complicated. But if I give you an example, it will look actually very easy. So let's start. So we have first the group, which is the direct product of three groups. Now we define some automorphism. And that automorphism is doing a very simple job. It's just shifting coordinate by one. As you can see here, automorphism of x1, x2, x3, we just shift them by one. So means x1 will move to the second place, x2 will move to the third place, and x3 will jump here. So let's say if I have, uh, because I'm here using b to, the, to some power, so let me just write it general. I will put, let's say, b uh, or beta to the power three. In case I have element, let's say, x1, x2, x3, up to x3. Okay? So again, because actually this construction, it can be also generalized, but I have it just, so it doesn't look that complicated. I have it only for the diameter equal to three. So beta from x1, x2, up to xn, will be, well, uh, beta is easy. So let's put beta, let's say, to the power two. So it's not shifting now by one, but by two. So here, if we have just beta from x1, x2, x3, x1 jump by one. Now x1 will jump by two. So x1 will be now in the third place, okay? So x1 will jump. x2 will jump to the fourth place. And so on. So what will be now in the, let's say in the first place? Well, X and minus. Right, X and minus one and X two. Great, so we know how it works. So this is the job of the automorphism. And so as you can see, there is a beta to some power. So now we know beta to the power just moved it, uh, moved it by this uh, number of elements. And now, we are using some semi-direct product, which is defined in this way, okay? So this is the operation. So we are using group H times H times H, and here we are combining it with Z12 in some little bit strange way, but let me just write you, write it down. What would be actually, how would it look? Because it looks a little bit uh, strange, but if I give you an example, I'm sure it will be easy for you to understand. So let's take element, because here I'm writing X, but X is coming from where? X is coming from H to the power three. So X has actually three coordinates. So X has X1, X2, X3, right? Because X is coming from this group. So X has three coordinates, X1, X2, X3. Good. And Again, uh, X prime has also three coordinates because X prime is also from the same group because it's coming from H to the power three. So from H to the power three, these coordinates are coming. And from Z12, these coordinates are coming. I and Y prime, okay? So again, X prime is actually X prime one, X prime two, X prime three, three coordinates. And now we have that y and y prime. Just 
put something. Let's say put y to be two. Because it's from Z12, and I want to give you an example so you can easily understand. From Z12, I'm picking here to be two. And again, from Z12, let me pick something also for Y prime. Let me pick uh, 11. And now this element and this element multiplied by this element, what am I going to get if I am following what's written here? This is the result of my operation. Well, uh, this one is easy, right? Because we just this element plus this element. So here, first part, second part, third part, and last. Okay? So uh, 2 plus 11, 13, which is 1. Okay. So it's best to start with this last coordinate because that's the easiest. And let's focus on this mess, what's uh, happening here. So you are keeping your x, and your x is x1, x2, x3. But you are shifting the coordinates of this one by, by two, right? So you are shifting by this number, these coordinates. Okay, so again, by this number, you are shifting these coordinates. So they will jump by this way. So what will be here? X, well, X2 is jumping by two and getting here, right? What will be here? And here. So this will be the result for this particular case, if I put two and 11 there. Okay, so now we have everything, because if you want to construct a graph, you need a loop and you need operation. So now the graph is constructed. Well, we could, we could pick any examples and just have the graph. As I mentioned, you can easily, at home, you can replace H by some small group, replaced by uh, Z2 or Z3, because it's group of order M in general, and you will have the graph. But now we must check the properties. What are the properties of this graph? What is the degree? So this what described is described in the uh, uh, actually, actually, graph is not defined yet. I forgot that we didn't define yet the generating set. The generating set is defined now here. Okay, so we are going to define the generating set. And the generating set contains uh, contains the following elements. Elements which are these elements. Let me just again describe to you what it means. Actually, you can see these two elements. Also, I'm going to show you what are the inverses of those elements. Or well, let's say first, what is the meaning of agent? It means in the first place, you will put anything from the group. Because this one is the, uh, the, the, this G is from that group, from that group H, from this group. So here you can put any element of the group. Let me make it simpler. If we would, for example, study, study uh, group, let's say Z20, Z20, Z20. And I would say, I don't want to have only one generator. One zero zero. If I would have generator one zero zero, it would give me ages as we discussed from i j k to i plus one j k. But now I want to minimize diameter. This one would give me only one edge. I want to get many edges. So I decided to have my generator not one zero zero, but let's say general one. Let's say G zero three, where G will be anything from the group. Let's say here, G from Z20, anything, which means G can be one, two, three, four, up to 90. Or actually anything is for the identity. So it means you will have edges not from I, J, K, only to I plus one J, K, 
but you will have a i plus anything in jk. So you will have, uh, uh, you will have let's say, 0, 0, 0, 22, 1, 0, 0, 22, 2, 0, 0, 22, 3, 0, 0, 22, 4, 0, 0. So you will have many ages. That's what means, maybe this one is actually easier. So that's what means here. If the age, uh, if the age is anything from the loop, then it actually contains all the possibilities. So let's say if the group has uh, whatever, 20 elements, it will have actually 20 possibilities. It will come 20 ages. From, so from this generator, from the, from the element, let's say which starts with zero, you will have a connection to one, to connection to two. In connection, you will have n connection. This means n connection. This one has two times g, but it still means only n connections. Because now, if you will be connecting your element i, j, k with i plus, let's say, some uh, a, j plus a, and k, you have still only n connections if the group has n elements. Because you'll be connecting 0, 0, 0 now to 1, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0, 3, 3, 0. So to these elements, 1, 1, 0. 2, 2, 0, 3, 3, 0, and so on. So here I'm showing, you know, like simple group, which is just the direct product of three groups. So we have here some like, little bit of an extra job. And maybe if you consider all these elements, because in case we have direct product, as we mentioned, what is the inverse element for, for I, J, K? The inverse element for I, J, K, is minus i minus j minus k because i j k and let's say minus i minus j or actually we are in multiplicative i to the minus one j to the minus one k to the minus one this one will actually bring you to in multiplicative group to identity which is one 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 because i multiplied by i to the power minus one will be one j inverse element will be one but now how possible that the inverse element to this one, or let's say this is slightly easier, the inverse element to this one. Look, here H is in first coordinate, but here these elements have H prime, or we can write that H to the power minus one in the second coordinate because of that automorphism, right? Because the group which, which we are working in, working with is shifting the coordinates, right? Because we must consider like, this one. So if we are studying multiplying this element, which is H E E, H identity, identity A, H identity, identity A. And instead of H prime, let me put H to the power minus one. And let's see if it's really going to give us identity element of the whole group. So now E, H to the minus one, E and four. What will be the reason? Well, let's start with A, eight plus four. Again, the group is Z12. So as you can see, since it's Z12, eight plus four will give us zero. Okay, and now H, E, E will stay. And now the automorphism is shifting these elements by eight. You might be wondering why am I shifting by them by eight? I have only three coordinates. Why am I going it over, doing it over and over? Why am I, because if I put here instead of eight, if I put here two, I would get the same here, right? If shifting them by eight or shifting them by two is bringing me to the same place. But the problem is, two and four here wouldn't give me zero here, right? So therefore I must put that eight because then I'm going to get here. Shifting by two will give me H to the minus one and uh, E and E. And you can see that you will get the identity of this group. The identity of this group is E, 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 zero. E is identity for H as mentioned here. 
and zero is obviously identity for the additive group Z12. And the same would work for uh, the next one. The same would work if you are studying what is the, what are the, what is the inverse element for one particular, let's say GGE1, you would get that this one is actually the inverse element. G to the minus one, E, G to the minus one, and minus one. Here I am writing it in this way, not to the power minus one, because actually in the next page, I'm using it to show what is the diameter, and it's better not to work with uh, any inverse mentioned here. But inverse for G would be here, G to the minus one, and inverse for H would be inverse element for that H. Okay, now we have generating set. Generating set will give us edges. Group will give us vertices. So now the graph is defined. And this graph, what I define, is the largest graph for diameter three. Well, it might be unclear how did we come with this construction, but there are some, some strategies and some methods they use something called graph lifting, which actually brings this graph in some other way. So there is some, there are some shortcuts and maybe some easier techniques. And only then later after you have the graph, you are thinking, how can I describe that graph? Well, and unfortunately uh, it was a bit uh, tricky, but this is the, the description of the graph. So anyway, let's study its properties. The Cayley graph has this degree. So it means degree means every vertex is connected to four M vertices. Every vertex is connected to M vertices, somewhere else M vertices. So let's say M, M. So every vertex is connected to M vertices. And actually, those connections come from the generating set because we know that every one element in your generating set gives you H, right? So if the generator is uh, one zero zero, it will give you one edge, right? If the generator is two zero zero, it will bring you different edge. Obviously, you must think also about inverses. So here, here we have, let's say if you are focusing here, here we have n elements because instead of edge, let's for a while assume that uh, for, uh, to make it easier that we are taking these G's and H from the cyclic group. So let's see if it's cyclic group Zn. So if we imagine it's cyclic group Zn, then it contains element 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1. So here you would have possibility 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1, right? So it means you would have m connections for every vertex, m generators to give you m connections. This will also give you m connections. This will also give you m connections. So see, we have four sets. Those four sets will give us four M to be your degree because that is the number of elements in our generating set. And now how big our graph will be? How many vertices our graph will have? Our graph will have the same number of elements as our group has number of vertices. Since our group has Let's go back because the group is at the moment not here. So as you can see, our group is defined here. H has M elements. H, again, M elements, M elements. So the number of elements in H to the power three is M to the power three. And the number of elements in Z12 is 12. So therefore our graph will have 12 times M to the power three elements. But we want to express it in terms of D because, as you can see, our result is in terms of D, in terms of degree, because our graph is for given degree and for diameter three, which means instead of taking M represented in terms of D, since the degree is for M, then M will be D divided by four, and then from this one, you will easily get this number of vertices. Now, the diameter of the graph. Uh, the diameter is something which will take some time. Since we are uh, three minutes before the end of the lecture, instead of starting to describe the diameter, 
Let me a little bit mention or answer the problem which I didn't answer yesterday. Almost nobody solved it, which was what is the smallest graph which is H transitive and not vertex transitive or opposite? Uh, opposite. I think the graph is vertex transitive, but not H transitive. So the graph, which is vertex transitive and not H transitive. <clears throat> and I wanted the smallest. Maybe it's uh, some small help, which may be, uh, so in case you want to solve it, then you must first like, what are the properties of like what, what what graphs you must consider because obviously first you must consider graphs having some small number of vertices i want the smallest so you might be thinking what about n equals to two so graph having and we are using for order so graph having two vertices or graph having three vertices let's go from the smallest or graph having four vertices will there exist the graph which is vertex transitive but not h transitive or graph having five vertices will there exist graph which is vertex transitive but not h transitive so the graph, which is vertex transitive, if you remember, if we remember from yesterday, if you are, you are moving a vertex of degree three to some other vertex, that vertex also must have degree three, okay? So vertex transitive graph will be regular, but H transitive graph doesn't have to be regular because Vertex transitive, the vertex must have the same properties. If the vertex has the neighbors, if it has three neighbors, if you have an automorphism, also in the new graph, it must have three neighbors, right? So if, you, if, if let's say uh, vertex U has neighbors V1, V2, V3, also in the next graph, it must have the same neighbors. So obviously, it must have the same degree, which means. Vertex transitive, it must exist automorphism where you can get from this vertex to any other vertex, right? So this one must be regular. Okay. Now, for n equals to 2, well, there are not many possibilities. It's only an empty graph or edge. This is one possibility. This is the second possibility. Well, both of them are vertex transitive and H transitive. So this one will not. Okay, N equals to three. You will have, again, empty graph, one possibility. The second possibility, if you want to be regular, you must have three side. There is no other possibility. But both of them are vertex transitive H transitive. So, again, repeat. You are fine. Okay. Uh, now, n equals to four. Okay. So again, we must consider regular because we want to be them, them to be vertex transitive. So okay. So this one. Then, is it possible to have degree one for every vertex if you have four vertices? Yeah. Yes. Right. This one. But still, these gaps are also vertex transitive and also edge transitive because this edge can come to this edge. Right. Also, here, this edge can come to this edge. Here, if it's no edge, it actually means it works by default. So, n equals to four, and other possibilities to have them. This one. And the next one is having degree three. But all these graphs are vertex transitive and also edge transitive. In case it's a little bit, you are unsure why they are vertex transitive or why edge transitive, you don't understand the concept, you can ask me after the lecture. Now, okay, so still, n equals to two, we didn't succeed. n equals to three, we didn't succeed. n equals to four, we didn't succeed. What about n equals to five? Okay, so empty graph that we will not achieve anything. Then can we have degree one for all the vertices? No. Degree two. Still, vertex transitive and also H transitive. Can we have degree three for all the vertices? 
No, because the order is odd. So we can have degree four, which unfortunately will again bring us just complete graph, which is again also vertex transient and also edge transient. And finally, fortunately, we are coming to n equals six, and then we will find the graph which is vertex transitive, but not edge transitive. And the graph uh, looks, let me think about the one possible representation is to write it down like this. In line, okay? So for this graph, if you give names, let's say, to vertices, V1, V2, V3, and U1, U2, U3, there is an automorphism for this vertex to go to any other place. You might be wondering, is there automorphism to go from V3 to these places? Yes, there is. Just you will put V2, V1, V2, V3 to the other side, right? So since they are nicely in a triangle here, V1, V2, V3, they'll be nicely in a triangle there on the other side. So V1, V, or let's say V1 can go whatever to U2, right? Because here you will have V1, he will create, create triangle from his V's, V neighbors, and U's you will put on the other side. But why it is not edge transitive? Because now if you think about edges, now we don't care about what, now we need the edge transit. Let's pick some edge from the same graph. So let's say this will be HE1, HE2, HE3, HF1, F2, F3, and let's say H, H1, H2, H3. Okay, now. There will be an automorphism with E1 to go to, to stay where it is, or to go this place or this place, as long as you keep E1 in the triangle, because here it's in a triangle, it will work. But you cannot put E1, which was in a triangle, to a place which is not in a triangle. Why? Well, let's just check it. Why it will fail? If we are hoping, which will not work, we would be hoping, can we put E1 to this one? Well, if it's transitive, it must be possible. If this one is transitive, there must be a way to keep E1 here and to continue giving the names of the edges in such a way that it will be the same graph. But look here, E1 has neighbor E2 and E3. And E2 and E3 are also neighbors. So can you have E1? You have two neighbors such that they are also neighbors. Not possible because if E1, you would have to put E2 here or here. E3, you would have to put E3 here or here. But E2 and E3 here share a vertex. So E3 is adjacent to it, but here you cannot achieve. So therefore, this graph is not edge transit. So I'm done. Thank you, speaker.